have. Let's check in now with Michelle Schneider, Chief Strategist at Market Gauge Group. Michelle, thank you for joining us on the show today. Good morning, Ryan. Hey, great to have you on as always. So let's get your take on what's playing out in markets. We've had a pretty good run recently, but it does look like folks are taking a bit of a breather like right now. Is it a sign of buy fatigue? Well, we've seen this before where we've gotten a one, maybe even two-day correction in some of these high flyers, obviously tech stocks. And then there's been huge amount of buying on the dips. So what we're really going to watch for now is if as we end the week, so we start to see some buyers come back in. If not, if not, if not, it is possible because we saw the ratios getting so stretched between many other areas of the market uh, and the tech stocks that this is just a narrowing of that ratio to some healthy degree and not necessarily the end of tech, Mm. but a rest for tech, and maybe a possible potential for other areas. But I would say that that's a little too soon to tell right now. The economic picture is very mixed. Yeah, there's been so much going on in tech, and to some extent, you've got announcements lifting the narrative, or at least the sentiment on that sector. So there's been a lot of questions about the sector being overbought, and what you have is a lot of optimism. What are some of the levels you're looking at when it comes to S&P 500 that you think is going to be the support levels at least? Well, right now, obviously, it got to 5,500 briefly. I'm, I'm very interested to see what happens. It closes at around 5,460. I'd like to see what happens around this 5,400 level. It was a target by a lot of analysts. And if it can hold, Mm. then I do believe, and especially seasonally right now, July tends to be a stronger month. If we cannot hold 5,400, 5,200 was really, I think, the major breakout that a lot of people didn't expect to happen. We'll see what happens there. To me, far more interesting than what happens with the S&P and the broader market and even the tech right now Mm -hmm. is what's going on with commodities. And I know you and I have talked about this in the past, but that's where my eyes are very keenly for many reasons, not the least of which, of course, is oil back being over $80 a barrel in terms of the West West Texas intermediate crude, uh, gold getting back over $23.50, silver back over $30, copper getting inching closer to $5. Um, You know, this is telling me that there's a lot of stuff under the surface that needs to be kept uh, under watch and still possibly a very good opportunity for people vested in some of these metals, whether they're precious or more industrial. Yeah, there is a strong fundamental story there. You've got AI, data centers, you know, all, all these things need the raw materials be helping to make the parts that are going to be going into what's going to drive the future for the economy. And I, I think you can also look forward to more demand coming on if China comes into the picture in a bigger way. Absolutely. And, and, and right now, um, in terms of AI and data center demand, it's taken up about 2 3% of the electricity hmm. uh, in terms of the global. And there's predictions that it's going to go to 19% by 2028. So you can see that the trend is definitely for more consumption. And electricity is only the secondary source, so we're, that's why we're looking at things like natural gas and uranium and copper, of course, which is all the wiring. Uh, Silver, Mm. even in terms of solar energy, is extremely huge. These are the materials that have been in short supply because mining costs have been so high and they've been undermined. And, of course, geopolitics affect that, too. That if the demand continues to go, like you say, from China and everywhere, AI data centers, we could see the super cycle of commodities still happening just nuance, not everywhere, like a lot of people think. Yeah, Michelle, so not just industrial commodities, but also the likes of gold will be worth watching out for. And you mentioned a couple of things that could help, I suppose, drive some safe haven buying. Um, what's to watch out, What's worth watching out for in the horizon? You've got geopolitics. Help us unpack it here. What sort of upside are we looking at when it comes to gold? Well, 3,000 seems to be the general consensus target. It, it sounds like a nice round number. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if we can hold up around this 2350, we'll, we'll, we'll get back up over 24. And then if we can get to 2450, then you might actually start to see a lot of people, particularly in the West, 
who mm. are underinvested in gold start buying because there'll be that fear of missing out, just like we saw in NVIDIA, which we know traded like a meme stock. Yeah. Gold can do the same thing. So, so can silver. So, you know, that's, that, that's what is, is getting me excited at this point because you have a fundamental reason, you have a technical reason, and then you also do not have a lot of cash allocation to it in this part of the world. In your part of the world, yes, there's been a lot of buying of gold for the last couple of years. Uh, Michelle, you pointed out NVIDIA, so let's talk about it. So we did see a bit of pullback on the stock down 3.5% in the latest session. What's your approach right now when it comes to NVIDIA? Would you be advocating for a rotation to other semicon names or continue to ride the NVIDIA bandwagon? <laughs> well, again, you know, for me, we, we have uh, quant models that mm. are momentum-based and obviously very heavy into tech. And some of those stocks that also had some correction today, like Micron and Qualcomm, you know, these things we got into a couple of months ago, um, I think the newest position would be Micron. Um, so I think you have to look around. Obviously, Dell, there's been a lot of talk about Dell yep. because of the deals it's making with NVIDIA. Um, you know, you want to take a look at that. But as I said, and, and, and I know that this is a very popular topic and we've taken a lot of profits, and I always recommend people take profits on these massive moves and trail up their stops so they don't turn winners into losers. I really do believe, though, that it might be time for them to take a pause, which would be fine. That doesn't mean the end of days. Mm -hmm. But again, start to look at some of the natural, the, the basic materials, the hard, raw materials that people, that these companies need and these machines need, need and people need, because we also have weather factors that can put stress on the grid system, especially as we're getting into hurricane season here in the States. We still have drought. Now India is talking about a possible uh, diminished monsoon season, which could be devastating for something like sugar. You know, to me right now, that's where my mind is. And I would just give the tech space a little bit of time to rest. Mm. I suppose it's a good reminder that things don't always go in a straight line, so there are opportunities down the road to get in at a better entry point. Another place you're looking at which I found interesting is Robin Hood Markets, and this is a company that, after COVID, went through a bit of a slump, and it looks like it's coming back right now. It was at 10, now it's over 20, and we've had a little bit of volatility in the crypto market, which of course isn't affected. It's a lot of money came out of it over the last few days. And all of a sudden, Bitcoin's become a political football with Trump talking about the fact that he would really continue to promote Bitcoin and mine in this country and yet Biden more in favor of a digital currency by central banks. And I think that's why we've seen a little bit of volatility here. But overall, with this 100% gain in Hood, I would be watching for some kind of entry if it could hold somewhere between the 15 and $20 mark. Yeah, Robin Hood Marcus doing pretty well in the year to date, up 75%, and in the past year up 117%. So worth watching out to see how much more I can run. We've been in conversation with Michelle Schneider. She is the Chief Strategist at Market Gauge Group. Michelle, thank you so much for your time and insights this morning. Thank you so much, Ryan. You have a wonderful weekend.